Hey, Gil. Hey, Mr. Barkley. You know what I'm thinking? Hello, yes, it's Charles Barkley. <laughs> That's from the CNN studios in New York City, it's King Charles. We're not gonna waste your time. Nope. With Gail King. <laughs> I'm Beyonce, but you can call me Gail. And Charles Barkley. <laughs> We're calling the shit out here. Tonight, best-selling presidential historian, John Meacham, former NBA star, Rex Chapman, and from The Daily Show, comedian Dulce Sloan. King Charles starts now. Going in, going in. Welcome, welcome. Yes. Every time I see that open, Charles, I always say, I'm glad we get to do this show, don't you? I, I love I'm love doing the show, but I'm pumped tonight. I know we got a, a couple special guests, but yes. I'm really excited for Rex Chapman. I love well, that guy. I know. I'm yes. I just met him. You you've known him for a long time, but you, I just you met were him. so excited you called me. And don't be calling me on the weekend, Gail. <laughs> yeah. We've got a real special show for you tonight because we've got three interviews that we can't wait to talk to you about. In a few minutes. We're going to bring in a presidential story and a man with a hand in the State of the Union address that's coming up very soon. His name is John Meacham. Then we have one of the stars of The Daily Show. That would be Dulce Sloan to talk about what's going on in this country. Some people are very concerned. We were out talking to people earlier this evening. They're very concerned about what's happening in America, how she's covering it. She's got a new book. She's talking about state of politics, dating. She's got lots to discuss. Plus, an interview. I know I'm very excited about this. Rex yes. Chapman. I didn't know Rex Chapman. He's on a journey. You have to see to believe from basketball star to attic to rock bottom to Twitter celebrity. Why do you like him? You've known him a while. Why I've do you known like him a long time. Number one, because he's just a great person. I, I really appreciate him sharing this book. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a younger brother who passed away who was uh, an addict. Mm -hmm. So it's very personable, personal to me to you. when somebody makes it out the other side. Mm -hmm. And How old was your brother? I want to say 42, 42. somewhere in there. So I can't a grown remember. up. Yeah, he was a grown up. Yeah, but yeah. man, most people, you know, I got a chance to meet Jelly Roll at the All Star Weekend. Yeah. And he had so many people who were covering on stage, and I walked up to him and said, "Man, thank you," because it's interesting when you're in the fight. Yeah. Because I used to want to grab my brother, like, "Yo, man, why can't you stop doing drugs?" Mm -hmm. He's like, "You don't understand." And obviously, he passed away at a young age, but it has such a negative... I don't think my mother ever got over, over it, to be yeah, honest with you, yeah. because when you have somebody who's struggling with addiction, it ain't just them. It's everybody it's around It's everybody them. around you. So looking forward to talking to Rex. Yes. And on our last show, just last Wednesday, just after the Alabama Supreme Court ruled that frozen embryos used in fertility treatments were children, that story broke just as we were going on the air last week. We had presidential candidate Nikki Haley on and asked her about the ruling. She told us at that time that she believes, you remember what she said? <laughs> yeah. She I said, do. Charles, she told us that life begins at conception. And so, yes, those frozen embryos, the ones thousands of desperate parents depend on to start or grow their families, should be considered children. And then the House and the day since her comments on this show, her fellow Republicans have been desperately trying to change the conversation on the issue. Here's, here's some of the conversation on this topic. I strongly support the availability of IVF for couples who are trying to have a precious little beautiful baby. People who want to have a family should have the government and the law on their side. I think the Dobbs decision clearly puts this issue back at the state level and we would encourage the state legislature of Alabama to to right this wrong. In terms of fertility clinics, if you're pro-life, you want these things to function. They actually provide people with children who have a hard time otherwise. Yeah, even Alabama Senator, that of course was Lindsey Graham, but Alabama Senator Tommy Tuberville is now saying IVF needs to be protected in the state of Alabama, which Charles is your state, now, for the record, many of the Republicans are saying they want to protect IVF. They're also co-sponsors of the bill that's aimed at doing the opposite. Now, dear, you're just sitting there with your head and your your hand in your your head in your hands. Never a good sign. What's wrong? When what I, are you thinking? When I agree with Trump, <laughs> Matt Gates, and Tommy Tuberville, <laughs> you know things are bad. <laughs> like, what do you agree with them on specifically? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody who wants to have a baby who's trying, mm -hmm. we should do everything to support them. Yes. Make it economic feasible and do everything in our power. Having a kid, my daughter, I have one kid. She's the best thing ever happened to me mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. And anybody who 
who wants to have a baby. We should be, do it everything, everything in our power yeah. to do, to give them the opportunity, make it affordable and things like that. But like I say, if I'm agreeing with Trump, Tuberville, and Gates, mm -hmm. you know Alabama got it wrong. Well, the problem in Alabama now is that many of the fertility clinics have put the procedures on hold, IVF. Yes. So all of these parents that are in limbo, that for many of them, this is the only way that they could have a child. Just think about that for just a second. And I think many people struggle when you say that an embryo is a human or, or is a child because they don't have heartbeats. Uh, they are not fully formed. And I've heard woman after woman say to me, you know, I had four embryos implanted, mm -hmm. none of them took. Yeah. Or I had two embryos implanted, only one of them took. So there's no guarantee that the embryos will become children. That's why people are struggling. Well, I understand that totally, but, yeah. like, we should never criminalize... Well, first of all, I want to say something before I get started. I I'm pro-choice. Mm -hmm. I want to make that clear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm pro-choice. Mm -hmm. But I disagree with the ruling for the simple fact we should make it possible and affordable. I know I'm being redundant, repeating myself, but it's just a bad ruling. And it's really unfortunate. It's not just in this situation. It's just really unfortunate how these politicians are taking away so many women's rights. reproductive rights. Yeah. Like, it's not up to me yeah. as a man. Even if I was in politics, it's not up to me to make the decision on whether women have babies or not. That's just, that's not mm -hmm. what our political system was about. Mm -hmm. The thing that bothers me the most, the politicians start using all these divisive issues as wedges mm -hmm. to make, to, to divide and conquer. I've always and said that. it's working, though, Charles. Well, what we know is that the former president always makes news. We were texting about this over the weekend, Charles and I, when he says, please don't text me early in the morning. I can't help it. The former president raised a lot of eyebrows with these comments while talking to listen to the audience, a black conservative conference. He said this. I got indicted a second time and a third time and a fourth time. And a lot of people said that that's why the black people like me, because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against. And they actually viewed me as I'm being discriminated against. My, the mugshot, we've all seen the mugshot. And you know who embraced it more than anybody else? The black population. It's incredible. You see black people walking around with my mugshot. You know, they do shirts. When you heard that, what did you think? <sighs> Big sigh. First Big of all, sigh. I'm just going to say this. If I see a black person walking around with Trump mugs, I'm going to punch him in the face. Charles. I know, Gail. Charles. Gail, Gail. You, I, you really can't say that because, A, you don't mean that. You, oh, I mean that <laughs> sincerely. I'm going to just tell you something. And then you will be arrested for assault. And then what? I'm going to bail then myself what? out and go celebrate. <laughs> if I still Don't no, encourage him. Don't encourage him. Okay, but it, go ahead. Seriously. Continue. <laughs> first of all, if I was at that, at that conference, yeah. I'd have got up and walked out. That was an insult to all black people. Because mm -hmm. he basically just saying, and first of all, black, to, to compare black history where we've been discriminated against to his plight. Yes. Well, first of all, he's a billionaire. Mm -hmm. And they're prosecuting him for stuff he did wrong. They're prosecuting him for stuff he did wrong. And for him to it's compare... It's still in the court system, Charles. We have to wait. It's still in the court system. But continue, continue. Well, continue. They, some of the stuff <laughs> is true. They did storm the Capitol. Well, well, yeah. They did say that the, the election was stolen. Those yeah. aren't lies, Gail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are They facts. did say that. They okay. did say that. But to compare, I would have got up and walked out. Mm -hmm. Because it's not a fair comparison. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a billionaire. He's had a great life. He's been president of the United States. To insult black people who have been discriminated against all these years, to put them in the same category, I, I, I was just offended. I, yeah. I mean, well, I really was. Some people question, A, if he is a billionaire. There's, there was always a conversation about that. But I think people thought... What do you think when you hear it? Well, I, I just thought... I, I thought it was insulting. I thought it was insulting to people of color that uh, to paint the, the black community with one brush, and you really can't compare his indictment I, 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 th I thought because he says, <sighs> I know it's so hard to, to verbalize it because it made me so angry and I, I was so insulted by his words. Because he's implying that because black people have criminal problems. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's what he that, meant. Yeah. <laughs> that, but, he said something, but that's what he meant. I, I do believe that. I do believe that's exactly what he meant. And then somebody tried to spin it to me and said, no, what he was saying is that 
he feels sympathetic to black people who have been falsely accused like he. I don't believe that that... I do not believe that is well, what I'm a, he was saying. You know, I don't like speaking for all black people, but I'm going to right now. Yeah. <laughs> we don't feel sympathetic to his plight. We do not. We do... And... You know, Gail... You don't speak for all black people. I don't like doing that, but I am in this particular case. We don't feel his plight. <laughs> uh, but... It, uh -huh. I really... I really just feel bad because we need adults in the room. You know, we got the immigrant problem. We got inflation. We got the situation in Hawaii. Like, I want to solve real problems. I don't want to talk about all this extracurricular stuff behind the scenes. I want somebody to get in there and say, hey, you know what? I want to do what's great for the American people. But you know what, Charles, while you say you don't speak for all black people, there is a contingent of, of people that say that the black vote, that Donald Trump is getting more black vote this time than he did last time. I know you've heard that. Well, I think there's a couple reasons. Uh, number one, I don't like using the term black people, mm. poor people. Mm. Americans discriminate... Uh, America, number one, uh, black people in this category, America discriminates against poor people. Mm -hmm. Whether you're white or black, black if yeah. you're poor, you discriminate. All these politicians... It's more of a class issue, you it's, say. It's, it's 100% more of a class issue. Uh, that's what bothers me. But as a guy, I've only voted Republican one time in my life. I voted for John Kasich for president. Mm -hmm. I have voted Democratic my entire life. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to question that. That don't mean I'm going to vote Republican. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm starting to question, like, I always vote Democratic because I'm like, you know, it's got a better chance of helping poor people. But the one thing I know about poor people, they're always poor. <laughs> and, 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 and the Democratic Party, uh, us, 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 as black people, we, vote, we voted for them... First of all, actually, black people used to be Republicans until the Civil Rights That's Act exactly back right. in the day. That's Most exactly people don't even right. know that. Yeah. But we both pretty much been Democratic for the last X amount of years. But we never hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. And they only come around every four years and say, vote for us. Yeah. They take all our votes for granted. That's why black people are leaving the Democratic Party. That's not meaning they're going to the Republican Party. They're becoming dis disinterested. They're like, I'm not going to vote. When Donald Trump says that... Uh you know, black people can relate to them or he relates to black people because, you know, been falsely accused or arrested. Have you ever been arrested? A few times. A few. <laughs> uh, and, and you know what? Um, I'm not proud of that fact because uh, I was for, wrong. For what? For, for fighting, for fighting. Uh, it, it, when I was young, I was stupid. I got to fighting a lot because instead of walking away like an adult, I was a stupid kid. Mm hmm you know, and kids, I tell kids today, man, walk away. Yeah. Let them call you names. Fighting But song, you didn't do that. Because I, I was young and stupid. stupid yeah. But as I've gotten older, I'm like, hey, if people said something to you, walk away. Mm -hmm. I was young and dumb and stupid, and I was like, hey, you know what? If you challenge me, I'm going to fight you. If you say something to me, I have to fight you. But now I'm a grown man. You said something to me like, hey, you don't like me. I get it. I walk the other direction. Yeah, but if you see somebody, a black person with a Donald Trump... Uh, I'm going to punch, punch him right in the eye. punch him in the face. I, 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 Gail, I promise you. <laughs> I would bail you out. I would bail you out. You're not going to be my first call. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's good. We'll be right back with renowned presidential historian and Biden whisperer John Meacham will join us right after the break. Who is your first call? That's a good your question. Your lawyer?